Act already nervous and tense here at the Weber Cup in Barnsley. It's only day one, it's only Friday evening. Europe leading by two points to one, but the USA do have their first point on the board, thanks to Wes Malott, who beat Europe's captain, Dominic Barrett. Still to come, we have uh, Oscar Paloma against Bill O'Neill, and then the captain's pick, an intriguing and fascinating twist on the world of 10 pin bowling. You'll enjoy that. That's coming up a little bit later on. But next up, it is Stuart Williams against the USA captain, Tommy Jones, with your commentators, Cass Edwards and Simon Goldie. Thanks, Tony. Bit of blue, bit of red on the board. Stuart Williams would dearly love to paint a third stripe on there. But he's up against the USA captain, TJ, Tommy Jones, the man that uh, virtually owns this lane, let's be honest, on his day. But a bit of edge in this match. Stuart Williams, very clever man, but uh, occasionally gets up to some antics on the lane. Up against a man, Tommy Jones, who does not suffer fools gladly. So keep an eye on this one for fireworks, not just on the lane. And he starts by leaving a 10. He won't be happy with that. Simon, we're on a freshly dressed lane here, 40 feet of fresh oil, and you can see uh, Stuart didn't quite get the reaction in the back end. Paul just uh, coming up light and leaving a temp in. But I guess uh, that will have to do for starters. The 34-year-old Englishman now based in Phoenix, but originally from Ellesmere Port. Takes out the 10 comfortably. Spare in your first frame, never really a problem. It's when you're building up a nice uh, series of strikes and you spare or open, that's what can cause real problems. Now, Tommy Jones, 36 years of age now, the man from South Carolina. Those uh, 300s, or 32 of them on the PBA, but it's the, the 300s, Cass, on this lane in the Weber Cup that we're interested in. <laughs> Simon, I'm just going to run through them quickly. Uh, 2007, 8 and 9, he beat Thomas Lee Anderson, Tory Torgerson and Oscar Palermo, all with 300 games. Came back in 2013 and hit one against Mika Kuevanyemi. So he's really got, got it in for the uh, guys from Scandinavia. Four maximums on this lane and starts with a strike. Yeah, just one Weber Cup with uh, surgery to knee and hip. He was in real pain on one uh, PBA season, but got that sorted and looks to be very strong again. Now Williams has to respond. Respond he does, bowling that slightly tighter line. But boy, does he get some mix on those pins when he comes into that 1-3 pocket right. Yeah, certainly holding the ball straighter down the lane than we have seen him. As I say, that's because the oil is there and he's got to be careful. Can't go too far wide, can't be too fast either. Stuart was the first uh, UK player ever to win the PBA title in the United States. Firstly followed by uh, European captain Don Barrett. Yeah, they flew back from that trip with their trophies. TJ. Working a strike, but doesn't turn it into a double. Williams is back. They're very close to a strike, and it was almost a straight ball from Jones, which is very unusual. Now watch this. Doesn't get very wide at all, gets to that uh, down lane marker, just snaps up a little bit higher. Certainly not using the full width of the lane as we no know Tommy Jones can do. So here comes the spare ball. Got the same hand as TJ, that spare ball. And nips away to the bag, so we may see a ball change already from Tommy Jones. Just be going to get uh, a bit of tape for the ball. Yeah, it looks like it's tape instead, so not happy with the drilled holes in the ball. Yeah, it just uh, needs to be a little bit more snug, either on the thumb or the fingers. It's normally the thumb that you'll put uh, some tape into just to tighten it up. If you've never been to a, a live temp in bowling event, that's one of the things that you have to get used to, that the thumb makes a, a massive popping noise, like a, a gunshot going off sometimes as the thumb comes out of the ball. There it is, that's because it's so tightly taped. And oh, that's a great delivery, I think. Uh, Williams has settled down here. Not very much difference from the previous two shots. 
of which was a spear, but uh, that's got him really lined up. Two strikes right. It's the first double of the game. And I kind of think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Stewart's averaged 220 for the whole of the season in the United States, over 150 games. Tom is a 219 average, so there's nothing between them. But this is a whole different setup, this single lane format. Oh, good. That looks like a really good ball. And the US fans finally have something to applaud after that point from Wes Malott. Yeah, they're regulars at the Weber Cup, the Team USA Appreciation Society. Somewhere from near Hartlepool, apparently, which is. Uh, in the north of England. Yeah, we've got all sorts in the Metrodome. Attracts a fantastic crowd, the Weber Cup always has done. Williams. Oh, just lacking a bit of pace there, Cassie bowled the last two deliveries, that little bit quicker, got to the pocket nicely. This one cuts up on him again. Just finished a bit too hard, a fraction high on the head pin. Trips out the four pin and leaves the nine pin standing. So it could have been a little split, but uh, it can only be a single pin spare, which he really didn't want. He had a chance of making a double to get back into this game. Spares are not what he's looking for. He spared the first frame. Spares the fourth. A little double in the middle, keeping him alive. Jones hasn't got a double yet. Get one here. That's how things look heading into frame four. And the US captain will be happy enough. And I guess just a reminder of how tough conditions are down there. We, you know, every time this man steps up, you you expect the big score. Closest to it was uh, Larson so far at this year's Weber Cup. No. Oh, I thought that was going to stay, and it's toppled, and that's a lucky break for the American captain. Gosh. <laughs> sort of sums it up. It's a wide shot, isn't it? Very light on the head pin. There's a bit of a mixture going on there, and that is an 8 10 split, and the 8 pin's gone over. That would have been an open frame. And he knows how lucky that's going to be. If he can make a spare here, it will be a bonus because that really should have been an 8 10 split. Yeah, just say thank you and walk away. TJ sliding it in from one side to the other. I don't know if you've noticed this, uh, Cass. He's really struggling with his uh, lead foot, especially on that side of the lane. I'm just wondering if he's finding a little bit of problem on the approach, maybe a bit tacky, or he may have got some lane oil or something onto the sole of his shoe. But. Uh, Certainly worth looking at next time he's up. But having watched him, as we have done over the last few years, I think since his hip operation, he's been a little more tentative on that front foot. Yeah, it's very true. Um, aches and pains do hurt occasionally. So, nine pin advantage technically on those maximums for Williams. That will stay in place. Even if his opponent strikes here, and there you go, there's a bit of chat between the two of them. Yeah, I think these guys enjoy playing against one another. Stu's pretty, pretty fortunate to kick that seven pin out, but hey ho. Maintains the uh, nine pin lead if Jones can strike. And there are the bowling shoes, and there's that uh, little bit of material on the lead foot that allows you to slide into the foul line, and that requires a bit of trust on the part of the bowler. And he goes, and that was a little bit more comfortable from TJ. Certainly made the pocket without too many problems, but giving himself a bit of a talking to there. Yeah, it seemed to slide all right on that one. The, uh, the chamois leather on the left sliding shoe that you were talking about. Has to be kept nice and clean, and, and there you can see the little sole underneath. Quick adjustment of the... Spectacles from the qualified accountant turned 10 pin bowling professional Stuart Williams. Oh, he's got a pair of Bobby Dazzlers on, hasn't he? Oh. 
double up he does knowledgeable crowd here in Barnsley they know their stuff and they know that that is a big big blow for Williams just th just thought for a fraction of a second they'd bowled this one too fast but it really snaps up in the back end and it's a perfect pocket hit and takes all 10 pins out for the double that you spoke about this will put pressure back on Jones who really has to uh, double himself now We've gone past the halfway stage yeah, great match play feel to this one now Cass they've got to match each other TJ then looking for the double himself oh no it's not going machine comes down and grabs it before the 10 pin has a chance to topple well, these are reasonably new pins and they've got uh, very square bottoms that they stand on and uh, normally a nudge like that would send it over, but uh, there's only been uh, a couple of hundred games played on these pins, so they're reasonably new. And he couldn't kick that 10 pin out, so it can only be another spare. Change has gone strike, spare, strike, spare, strike, and this should be a spare, so he's uh, pacing 200 if he keeps going like that, but... Uh, Williams has got two doubles and he's standing up, possibly shoot a turkey here and maybe able to sew this game up rather early. Yeah, that makes good reading at the moment for Stuart Williams. And turkey. A little bit early. Thanksgiving and all that. But that will go down very nicely. Forget beef stew. He's given himself a real well, we've not seen this side of Stuart Williams before. This is this is something new from the Englishman really taking his time over the shots and trying to positively reinforce what he wants to do he likes it and that's why it's another strike three in a row for Stu Williams this really was a big ball for the European side goes three strikes in a row and he knows how important that is and you can tell by the look on his face and his body language a really important time to shoot a strike. Pressure very much now back on the, uh, the American captain, Tommy Jones. I've never seen Stuart Williams talk to himself like that before. I've seen him talk to himself a lot afterwards, but not before a delivery. It's working. Jones is actually on his 10th consecutive Weber Cup, which is a record. And that's, well, it's not a record, but it's a split. Six pins only on his first game, on his first shot. Goes high through the head pin, overreaction the back end. Well, I don't want to get all technical on your cast, but that's a stinker. It's a stinker. It's the three, four, the six, and the seven. Now it can actually be a makeable spare. He's going to try and chip this three pin across to the left hand side. He's just checking the uh, television monitor that's down by the side with the scores on it. He's going to stick with his strike ball as well, not gone to the plastic. He wants this reaction because he needs the ball to move the pins around. Trick shot time. And I'm afraid leaves all four. And that is just about game over. Well, you can tell, yeah, it was his strike ball, but it went straight and it, it got snagged up in the all in the centre of the lane and just aqua planed away. It was going absolutely nowhere, almost into the channel. Look at that no reaction at all and six and a miss as you say Simon it's probably much the end of the game and Stuart is now standing up knowing that um, he's just got to do the business now just uh, stay clean yeah, Parker Bowen and Wes Malott in the front row next to referee Bernie White watching this one along with Martin Larson that's who TJ was talking to and uh, well, he can talk all he wants Stuart Williams He's doing the business here for Team Europe. Great looking shot. He really does like this uh, lane condition, the way the oil has been laid out and the way his ball is driving through it. Getting some nice reaction from a straight looking shot. Four bagger from Stuart Williams keeps him on for a potential 2 6 9. Which, uh, in the scheme of things, so far at Weber Cup 16, would be a fine score. Yeah, I'm afraid the 300 man is uh, struggling with a lack of strikes at the moment. It's a better looking shot and it carries all 10. But it's frame eight out of the way and Tommy Jones hasn't doubled yet. 
He's got some work to do just to be the 200 man at this rate. Well, yeah, he's been player of the year. He's won the US Open Tournament of Champions. He's got a fabulous uh, credentials. He, he wins tournaments in Japan uh, just for fun. I think he's won four out there in the last few years. And some big money as well in those high rollers. They are very big money indeed, yeah. Perhaps he saves himself for that. Williams just bounces around the 10. So leaves that one. His uh, run of strikes comes to an end. No real damage done. This one just gets away a little bit. It's a little bit light going in on the head pin, and that's why the uh, six pin lays down in the gutter. Doesn't uh, take the 10 pin away. That's good enough for a spare and probably the game. wry smile from Tommy Jones as his opponent walks past him and Stuart Williams is fired up absolutely no about, doubt about it I think that sometimes gets in the way of the Stuart Williams game but when he gets the mental and physical things balanced he is a hell of a player so TJ room for a bit of experimentation here Another slightly fortunate strike in his favour means he doubles in the foundation frame. Yeah, it's just uh, opening his shoulders a bit, experimenting slightly there. Fortunate to keep the four pin and make, makes a strike, but Stuart needs three pins and it's all over. Well, this is how you want things to be. Get the job done. And uh, again, leaves the 10, so that's something to think about. As this Weber Cup moves on, but for the moment, Stuart Williams has done the job that his captain, Dominic Barrett, has sent him out to do. He's claimed the point. <laughs> job done, and a very fine job done by Stu Williams. Yeah, as you say, um, Simon, Dominic Barrett sent him out on heavy oil, freshly dressed lane, and he's answered the question, and he's going to be 2.30. And that will be a winning score. Well, it'll be fascinating to hear from Stewart. Little experiment there with a change of ball. It'll be fascinating to hear from him. And he has a chat after this game because I think he was feeling that out there today, and I think that meant a lot to him. And it's another feather in his cap. Not just a point on the board for Team Europe, but a win over the American captain Tommy Jones. Which means, Cass, that neither of the captains have won so far at Weber Cup 16. That's right, yes. Um, Tony, I'm, unfortunately, we'll probably be licking his wounds here. And when it's all too late, he throws three strikes in a row. Big open frame in the seventh frame was the uh, did the damage to start with. Yeah, just looking back through that scorecard, it was a, a pretty dramatic descent from Jones. But didn't Stuart Williams do well to capitalise and that, that four bagger just stomping all over Jones's errant bowling? Yes, indeed. Tommy's just uh, using a different ball here now. He's just an experiment. He's got a different reaction. Got his name on that ball, isn't he? A legend. <laughs> oh no, and that one leaves a 10. So the experiment not completely successful. That comes the plain plastic ball, the ball that you don't want to react. Just want it to go straight, and it's gone straight in the gutter. And that means that Tommy Jones is 100 short of where we know he can usually play. Just a 200 game then from TJ, but from Stuart Williams. Quite brilliant under pressure. 2-3-7 for the Englishman. Means that Europe put another bit of blue on the board and move to a 3-1 lead here in Weber Cup 16. Things getting very interesting on the first evening. More to come after the break.